What's up, family? Welcome back to my channel. I am Brittany, my love, and this is my love of life. <laughs> about Napa Valley and unfortunately this video was supposed to be a Valentine's Day video my timing was so off it slipped by me so the tips and tricks in this video you can apply to any occasion anytime you want to pop by Napa Valley and I'll show you guys exactly my strategy to plan the trip and while you're here go ahead and like that button down there you know that button and subscribe to my channel it helps me out so much if you guys support me by doing that thank you okay so great news officially as of january 29th this year napa valley opened up for wine tasting a great thing because it was right before valentine's day i know some people don't celebrate valentine's day but we're the couple that does so i took it up on myself to search online and try to figure out exactly where we can go, what we can do for Valentine's Day because since COVID, we couldn't do much to celebrate any of the holidays. We found a couple places in Napa Valley that were open and they still had the COVID restrictions in place. A lot of the precautions were as normal, social distancing, wear your mask, wash your hands, sanitize, and sanitizing stations throughout the property and definitely reduce capacity. So there was places that I called and they said, you know, don't be alarmed, we have about 10 tables, but we can only have four parties. So that was kind of like, huh, you know, you know, encourage the distance. And almost every place that we went had outdoor tastings, which was pretty cool. I'll get more into that later in the video and let you guys know what, what went on. So with the reduced capacity, reservations are required. I don't believe you can even walk in most places, but you do have to make a reservation. So in this video, I'll definitely go over the places I chose, how to do a reservation, the tools I use to do so, and more. You want to make sure you have a schedule and you're able to block out time, literally to the T. So if you want to get in about let's say two or three tastings, you wanna make sure you have room one to enjoy yourself, travel time, and you also wanna make sure that that reservation is set. The first website I went on to do my research was NapaValley.com. I tell you guys, they do a great job on that website. They have articles you can read for different weather, different tastings, things to do if you don't even like wine. They have so much information on that website. The next website I used was called talk 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 like TikTok. <laughs> y'all know and by the way guys i'm getting braces i'm getting braces okay back to the video so yeah i'm really excited about that that website was awesome i was able to book reservations check out different wineries and right there in real time so if i put that we wanted to do something at two o'clock punch it right in and bam, everything available in that time frame. You can put the city, all that stuff. I'll show you guys. The other two are a given. Yelp, of course, use Yelp for everything. Only thing about Yelp this time around, anytime I put in Napa Valley, which is you know, a bunch of different cities, it kept taking me to places that were like nowhere near Napa Valley. So I put in Napa Valley wineries and it was taking me to Hillsburg, which is an hour and some change away. Keep that in mind when you're searching on Yelp, pay attention to the city that it suggests. And I would say the same thing for Groupon. Groupon has so many great deals and I was kind of bummed because some of the places we went to and I went back on Groupon just to double check and they had the deals that I didn't take advantage of. But it was cool because when we got there, we said, well, I keep hearing about this Groupon deal or however, you can talk them into it. You can, you can, you have some wiggle room. Everybody's excited to be back open. Okay, so back to my reservation story. Long story short, the planner I am, I did not check the weather. So we woke up that morning, it was a beautiful Sunday in my head, and it was raining, straight up raining. The first reservation I booked for us was at 10.30 at a place called Silverado Vineyards. I booked that reservation, I wanna say maybe a couple days before. It gave me a confirmation, I was able to pay for the tasting online, it was awesome. The morning of, staff called and told me 
we don't have covered patio seating and it's raining, we have to reschedule or cancel your reservation. Yeah. Knowing how I am, I'm not an early person unless it's about some money. So I had to get ready, do all that stuff and receive that phone call. I was like, I'm not gonna panic. I'm not gonna panic. I'm gonna go back to my resources and find another location. So Brie, poor girl, she hops on the freeway, she's driving, doing my thing, doing my thing, and I find another spot. That place is called Etude Wines. And they were awesome. I found them on the website, and just to make sure, you know, I don't get screwed out of another reservation, I went ahead and gave them a call, because their number was listed right there on talk. Gave them a call, and the lady said, go ahead and book it now we have availability no one's here yet come on down so that was my redemption story because i was not gonna mess up my day oh my goodness or i'm sorry our day it's valentine's day come on now <laughs> so i highly recommend calling these locations during business hours most wineries are open until about 5 p.m so definitely give them a call, check out their availability, stuff like that, just to double check. You don't wanna go, especially if you're traveling from far. We're traveling right here from San Pablo, California. We're not that far from Napa Valley, but I know some people are making a trek to come out here. So definitely make sure you make those phone calls to secure your reservation. So really quick, I'm just gonna name off the places that we went to and just a little background about all those spots we went to. I ended up booking about two wineries and one special place for Brie, and that was a distillery. I could not believe they had a distillery in Napa. That was bomb. And I also scheduled our lunch because it seemed like a lot of the places required a reservation too for restaurants. So I took advantage of that, and I believe I booked it on the same website, Talk. First winery that we went to, by accident, kind of on purpose, was Etude Wines. They are established in 1982. They specialize in Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. <laughs> the cool climate in that area allows them to have a world-class product, so it's pretty awesome. I liked that place a lot because it was covered, it was seating, everybody in the staff was very attentive, they answered a lot of our questions, and me and that was our first place. We were just able to kind of get our feet wet with the wine tasting. The second place we went to was the Napa Valley Distillery. I know they sound kind of young, but established in 2009, they are the first distillery in Napa Valley since the Prohibition days. Can you believe that? <laughs> they are a family owned establishment, which is awesome. And they have everything from brandy to whiskey to vodka. <laughs> and more so that experience was pretty unique for lunch we headed over to the forge now this place was pretty cool so they had outdoor seating the original restaurant launched in oakland which is down the street from us so it was pretty cool to check them out in 2013 they finally opened their doors and they expanded to napa so they offer a unique casual dog friendly eating environment and it was pretty nice didn't really have enclosed area but they did have those heat lamps which are very important for eating outside and last but not least we went to everybody's favorite and actually my first time ever being there B Saturi I hope I'm saying that right they have the richest history they've been there since 1885 and looking into their history is pretty you know a great story the prohibition days made the original owner go into retirement so in the 1920s, he decided, you know what, I'm good, I'm gonna go retire. And it took until 1976 for his great grandson to come and actually reopen the winery all those years later. So I think that was pretty awesome. They have a large selection of award-winning, small batch, small lot wine. And it's just awesome, it was a great experience. All the staff was super friendly, super nice very informative it's a funny story we were sitting in our table we're in this giant tent and it's covered and we kind of were like in a vip area of the property our own host and he had to take his break which you know we all have to we work in the you know we know how it, how it is and he hands off his table us to another gentleman and this guy was 
smooth. I believe his name was Carlos. Shout out to Carlos. He came singing and swooning and pouring extra wine. He just gave us the experience we were looking for. Our original host that we thought was just, he was cool, you know, he was cool. He comes back, full blown attitude. He's like, oh, you guys want Carlos back? We're like, no. <laughs> Like, don't be mean to us, bro. Like, we, we, we love you too, man. We love you too. It was a laugh. It was a joke. But he was, I think he was serious. But overall, it was a really great experience. Carlos set it off for us. We ended up buying some bottles of wine from this location. I kind of wanted to sign up for their club, their membership. So that's something to definitely think about because you cannot get their wine, so I'm heard, anywhere pretty exclusive. So... I think it could be worth it later on down the line. So yeah, that wraps up our day. We were able to take advantage of three tastings and have some really, really good food. I definitely love the fact that I was able to research on NapaValley.com before I made any decisions about where to go. And it was really, really helpful. The articles that they had written and the reviews that people have written over time helped make that decision for us, being it was our first time wine tasting. So definitely do your research. Please do your research. Use all these tips in stride. Be safe. COVID is still around. Just make sure you're using those precautions. We didn't find the need to stay in Napa Valley since we actually live so close. I mean, if you guys have any questions about lodging, I highly recommend Airbnb. I hope this video helped out somebody out there. I really do like doing these kind of videos. Travel is not really like my niche but we do it so i might as well share with you guys how we do it this is how we do it <laughs> sorry y'all thank you guys for being here i really appreciate it please like share comment subscribe do all that fun stuff the youtubers say and i will see y'all on the next one bye <laughs> What is wrong with you? Thank you. I got a MacBook sucker. Oh my god. Now I'm feeling YouTube all the time. I got no excuse.